Today we're going to be looking at whether or not Torum on Nintendo Switch is worth a fiver. While scrolling through the best-selling download-only games on the Switch eShop, Torum was number 3 on the list. And wouldn't you know it, it's because it's heavily discounted. So let's find out if it's worth a fiver. First though, please like the video and subscribe to Sterling Gaming for more videos like this one. Now let's get to it. Discounting a game 98% is sure to sell some copies, and that is the case for Torum. I've never heard of this game. Nor was I sure what to expect, as the description of the game is pretty generic. So here's mine. Have you played the first game I ever reviewed on this channel, Enter the Gungeon? Or my sixth worth of fiver video, Crypt of the Necrodancer? Well, Torum is a match between the two of those games, a roguelike dungeon crawler. So each time you play, the biome layouts will be different, and you need to collect loot and different weapons as you make your way to the boss of each area. First thing to note is that I played exclusively in single player. There is multiplayer where you work together locally with a partner to progress, but I wanted to note this because on my own I felt Torum to be rather difficult on the normal difficulty. I've never been good at dungeon crawlers like Torum, so it was a bit challenging for me to even get to the boss of the first biome. The first boss will have you fighting against Kantasauce, and it took I believe 5 attempts before I finally understood his attack patterns and could take him down. It was super close as I just had a sliver of health left, and I was feeling pretty good about the close call. Then as soon as I ventured into the next room, the green slime shoot projectiles which I was not expecting, and I died before I could even get out of the first hallway. And when you die, you're sent right back to the beginning of the game with no loot or weapons on you. After this unfortunate circumstance, I changed the difficulty to easy and made my way through the game up until what I believe is the final boss, as the extended map only shows three boss icons, but I lost to it, barely dealing more than half damage. But I certainly did not feel as defeated when I lost that battle. There are two characters that you can pick from, Moti and Quickie. Moti is better suited for close combat and non-mana reducing attacks, whereas Quickie is better for ranged attacks that use mana. It might not matter which character you end up choosing, because for the most part, the loot you come across will have a greater impact on how easy or difficult your time will be as you progress through the dungeon. Either by purchasing items from the merchants or by obtaining them in chests, better weapons and loot can improve your chances of survival drastically. The one unfortunate thing, especially in the first biome, is that you will likely not have enough coins to purchase more than one item, and there isn't a description on what effect each one has prior to purchase. So it can be hit or miss until you start seeing some of the same items repeated, and know whether or not to buy or avoid. Even with the challenging normal difficulty, I have enjoyed my time playing Torum. If indeed defeating the third boss is the end of the game, then those who are good at roguelike dungeon crawlers will make short work of Torum, and it would be difficult to recommend it at its regular price. But moving over here to DekuDeals.com, we can see that it is soon coming off sale, where it's at 98% off its regular price, reducing from $19.99 down to just $0.30 cents Canadian. So for $0.30 cents, I cannot complain. If you have some gold coins kicking around on your Nintendo account, this is a good game to use them on, as Torum is worth a fiver. Have you played Torum? Do you think it's worth a fiver? Let me know in the comments below and I'll see you in my next video.